Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. Today we are talking about this one. So this is Rites of Passage, The Pagan Wheel of the Year, written by Pauline Campanelli, probably butchering names, and it's illustrated by her husband Dan. So this is an older book, it's from 94, and for the most part I thoroughly enjoyed this book. There are some things that do make it a little bit dated, but it is one that I would eventually go buy. As we know, I've been getting a lot of books from the library, this is one of them. You can see their little tabby tab. And I'm kind of surprised, honestly. The library stamp is from 97. So like, it's been in circulation with the library here for a while. And it is out of print now, which is surprising that an out of print book would still be at the library. I'm proud of them. Just go them. I don't know if they know that it went out of print, because like, who's keeping track of the witchy books? But like, this is one I want to go buy. Now, does it have everything that I need out of a book on the topic? No. <laughs> Would it be different written now? Yup. So the thing is with this book, it is dated. It's not bad by any means, and it is a specific, like, way that they would go about things, but it's kind of interesting to look at it from the perspective of, like, where they were at in their life growing up as pagans to now. Because this book has been out for almost 30 years and like they probably had gone through a lot of these like life events well before the 90s. So it's just interesting to read through it in the like mental capacity of looking at it of like the previous generations looking at like paganism versus now. Like it's interesting. Is it completely helpful? No. I personally like to look at things from like other people's perspectives, especially like older generations. I think it's fun to see how like our perspectives of like existing have changed. That said, there is definitely like one narrative with this book. So this book, it is all about like your heteronormative stereotypical family. <laughs> there is nothing for the other, which is a bummer. Because like reading through this book, I'm like, adoption has got to be in here. No, it's not. It is all about having a baby yourself. And like really only focused on the mom side, which like granted I'm huge on having both parents involved. And like nowadays, I think there would be a bigger discussion on how moms or dads could be involved. And I don't know what non-binary parents are called. I don't know what you would call yourself. Is it just parent? I don't, I don't know. That said though, there's nothing for that, obviously. So there's also no mentions of like the IVF struggles or also in our case to probably be like either using a surrogate mom and or adoption. Nothing about that. And so that's kind of a bummer of like, but why, why can't you include these details? Because that's something that I have started to, like, especially notice in paganism. Like, it's always been there, but it's just kind of at the forefront anymore. And it's the, like, hyper-focus, like, where Christianity, typically, is the one that's like, Oh my god, the body is a sin, basically. Pagans are the opposite and kind of have gone overboard the other way. And really kind of shove it in your face all the time everything's fertility, everything's sexuality. It kind of gets old over time and how much focus we put on a body. And so this book is no exception. The like female body is all about your ability to have a kid. Starting off, it's all of these like rituals and things to do when the mom has given birth, which obviously that's very common, but anymore it's, I don't know if it's still like the most common because I'm like, same sex couples are having kids very frequently now. Like, adoptions again are a thing, surrogates. Like, there's no conversation about that at all in here, which is a little isolating. I also feel like there should be something for like the fathers who are like going through the journey too. They're also there, they're also involved, and there's like nothing for them, really. But yet, when they do the ritual, they're the ones like in charge leading everything which felt really weird for how much we're like focusing on like the motherly aspect. It was really weird. And like, you know, things with the like hand fastings and then how you go through life, it's very focused on like 
you're gonna like have your period and then they also talked about how like for a boy you would just pick 13 as the age which was like they kind of explained why which is good and like I do feel like they've pushed a little bit of like oh but now you are a woman and you are a man and I'm like they are not what are you talking about that's just a new stage in life they are not they they've just moved up out of child into teenager that's it they can learn some stuff totally a great time to introduce them to the craft hardcore if they're interested but like no <laughs> like my niece is gonna be 13 this year and it's like she is not an adult like she's smart she's starting to mature she, I would not call her an equal yet she, she's still a child like no I would like really like to be honest like under 25 is like like 23 to 25 is like you're a child definitely still a child teenager and so for anything it would be like you're moving from your child phase into your maiden phase and then you can move into your lover phase because like no that was one of the weird things where you're like supposed to in ritual like call them your equal at that point and you're like no no they're not there yet they're really not there yet because it's like looking at them as an equi like you're equal in like they're now a man or they're now a woman and i'm like no like yeah they can technically like have kids of their own but like they're not equal to you you could go have kids they should not like physically that's still not good for them mentally emotionally socially that is not good either so like not quite an equal no I feel like different verbiage and then of course there's like they <laughs> it was so funny they were like so like oh, i can't talk about that for like the great right and stuff they're like there are books on that if you need that information and i'm like okay <laughs> that's a weird hill to die on but all right and then the death chapter was like whatever it wasn't the worst thing ever written and there was definitely some parts of it that are totally like yes you should read this was the ritual what i would really want no so for the death part of this book for the most part just kind of your run -a mill whatever. Like, it's got some interesting stuff. The thing that really stood out to me was it was talking about, like, having, like, a pagan cemetery. And, like, now we have one. I think it's only one. <laughs> and I think it's Wisconsin. Not exactly, like, easy to get to. And talked about, like, having, like, funeral pyres that still isn't legal, really. There's, like, one place in Colorado. And, like, it's very specific on how that goes down. Otherwise, it's illegal and talking about like there's a lot of stuff that like you can't do and it's like looking at the death industry from this time to now is like insane. I don't think they would have ever thought that like human composting would be a thing, that aquamation would be a thing. <laughs> like, I don't think they even knew or could have like considered that as an option, let alone discussions on green burials and having like full green cemeteries. Like, it's becoming more popular. Like, there's a lot in, like, that industry that, like, they were talking about, like, in the distant future, and it's like, would 30 years really feel like the distant future? Because kind of, but kind of not. Because, like, 30 years from now, like, I would be going, like, mid-50s going on to 60s. So, like, it does feel like, like, a long ways away, but also not. <laughs> and, like, the grand scheme of things, that really isn't that far into the future. Yet with technology and how society is like changing and evolving, especially with social media, we're really connected around the world now that you just weren't before. Like it's changing so fast that it's like, maybe. It's hard to think of what the future holds 30 years from now. So anyways, this book has been really interesting. I do plan to get a copy of it. I don't know <laughs> when I will. Um, because it can range from like $40 to $90 right now <laughs> and there's only a couple listings for this book so do check your local libraries I don't know if it's everywhere like if it's a shared system of like what books are in stock or not but again I'm surprised it was there and like I thoroughly enjoyed this I will plan to get a copy at some point I don't know why Llewellyn dropped it it's kind of weird I don't like how publishing houses just decide that like a book doesn't need to be in print anymore I feel like that's kind of lame honestly just like with print on demand too like just <laughs> like put a disclaimer like this is a print on demand thing and just have like a special warehouse 
just for those orders, you know, like, or even you have like a digital copy would be fine. I just don't know why it would go out of publication. It bothers me. So anyways, that is going to be it for this book. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like to support me get access to exclusive content, it is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every single day. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and blessed be.